steam billows from the nostrils of, of the mud horn as it powers down. And you can hear sirens in the distance. All right, well, I guess the... What's the... Would sirens be the po like the clones or like the police? The police like dissolve once the clones like. No, there's still Coruscant police, but in this sector of Coruscant, it's mostly clones. Uh, I think the clones can take it from here. Don't get yourself in any more trouble, buddy. Uh, stay away from big machines that could hurt you and and the friendly citizens of Coruscant. And do he, you do you he, wrap them up? Yeah, wrap wrap them up. <laughs> turns to leave and is almost like wait a second and just turns and <laughs> <laughs> and then you whip cord thrower away as the clones arrive they uh, inspect the damage there are um, a few with with data pads looking over the the ruined areas of the street the street lights the buildings and they take this tung into custody and as they load him into one of their cruisers a person in black and gray surveys the scene they have a helmet shining black they open up the front of it look around sniff the air turn and head back into the cruiser and there's a screen for a biotech mm -hmm. park's internships is almost over as he heads down into the basement, into Manny's lab, he sees the Quarren hard at work looking at some samples through a microscope, jotting things down. What, um, what does the end of Park's internship look like? Does he have like a final project? What's going on here? Um, yeah, he does have a final pro project. His final project was to it's kind of like uh, to build something, a useful prototype. And I think that his, the prototype he designed was for like a uh, worker safety. It's like a, a suit that would make working on some of the more hazardous environments in Coruscant or on uh, a star cruiser a little safer. I think this suit is kind of armored, but also can, um, absorb like any accidental you know shock or energy displacement not necessarily uh, and uh could also be used to like maybe uh charge or like test whether electronics are working okay so this is a biotech company what's the biological portion of it hmm the biological portion of it isn't the biological portion the the person that gets inside of it <laughs> Are there like uh, microbes that absorb haz hazardous radiation or something? Um, yeah. <laughs> and I won't go into any more detail because uh, uh -huh. I don't know anything about Star Wars microbes. Maybe Park located found some uh, some strange organisms when he was uh, poking his head in a sewer recently. Yeah. So when he was poking his head in the sewer, he found that there are, there's plenty of life down below the, the city. Bioluminescent, um, you know, things, creatures large and small. And maybe this uh, suit harnesses some of the smallest of, uh, of those microbes. Is it, is it actually like some, some sort of strange spider silk or something? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It uh it uses this strange spider silk that that through some testing he found could could carry an electrical charge through it. Mm -hmm. uh, and as he gets down there, um, Manny hears him coming and says, "Oh, hey Park, come take a look at this. We got the samples in from that uh, that ship. There's some really interesting stuff here." Interesting stuff, huh, Manny? All right, let's uh, let's see what we got. And you look through this microscope. Yeah, you you remember the, the 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 story about this stuff where people were eating it and well, it was turning them weird. I do remember this story. Well, it's uh, it's pretty neat. It's actually showing some signs of intelligence. That is interesting. 
All right, let me take a look. You see this, like, sludgy, creamy-colored stuff that is, like, moving through the slide, and it envelops uh, a little microorganism, and it lets go of it, and then the, the microorganism is looks like it has it in it. Like, you can see through it, and then the two things are acting together and seeking out other other things. Hmm. Look at that. Looks like it's pretty aggressive. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit aggressive. I wouldn't let this stuff out. Not after those stories you heard. And, uh, what are we, what are we planning to do with it, Manny? Just see if we can find something to, to counteract it? Well, right now it's just about containment, but if there's any, um, uses for, you know, the people that we work for, we're interested in, in using things like this to, uh, advance the galaxy hmm well if it's making people weird making um, people pretty weird i don't i don't i wouldn't say there's any obvious way that this could uh help folks across the galaxy but well, i guess it, that, uh, that remains yeah. to be seen well we can be a little bit more scientific than making people weird it enhanced strength but uh had adverse reactions to uh extreme temperatures Interesting. Well, anyway, you've got your project to finish up. Yeah, I'm almost finished. Uh, I think I'll, I'm going to be finished any day now. Um, also, I have to be because I only have a couple days left. Yeah, you looking forward to graduation? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to summer vacation. What are you going to be doing? You want, I'm not going to be here. Well, I haven't thought that far, uh, Manny, right? But I'm going to be... Relaxing, enjoying myself, catching up on some of my hobbies. Then you head off into your corner of the lab. So what is it that, that Park is working on here? Yeah, he pulls a, a plastic sheet off of what he's been working on. And you see this uh, suit. I think that what is probably the most unfinished about it is their... There theoretically could be like an extra like outer layer that might like keep it a little bit cleaner or keep it like, but it would also probably make it look a little more dumpy because right now it's kind of almost looks like uh, almost has that like clone armor kind of like sectioned pieces. Utilitarian. With, yeah. With, but this suit, I think in particular, unlike the clone suits, it has some areas where you can see wires traveling down from section to section and maybe you can see like this kind of faint glow that connects uh each of these sections with these wires and i think that that glow comes from the the special silk that was harnessed in the the depths of coruscant mm -hmm. and bark spends some time working on it working on the uh the exosuit portion of it getting it uh ready for review when is graduation? Is it like, is it like tomorrow? It might be tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, it's tomorrow. <laughs> when is the big dance? Is it today? It's, it's today. <laughs> yeah, graduation day is tomorrow. And I think Park is so busy between keeping Coruscant safe and working on his suit, which is maybe going to become part of keeping Coruscant safe that I don't think he's thinking too much about graduation. It's not on his mind, but it is It is coming. Is this review today? I don't think it's today. Okay. Yeah, the suit's not done yet. Park has sense, right? Seek? Seek. Not sense? Mm, doesn't look like it. Okay. As Park is working, he starts to get a bad feeling. Mm-hmm. Like, like those, those threads that uh, attach... People and places and things are vibrating in a way that is unnerving. Something's like it's almost like uh, that feeling when you're when your hands asleep. Mm -hmm. like that in those threads, something something fuzzy, something strange. And Manny gets a a, a page. The calm goes off down here, and and you hear Manny say, "Oh, ah, uh, yeah, we'll we'll be we'll be up in a minute." Uh-huh. Yep. Uh-huh. Bye. And he comes back and says, Uh, Park, they've... Hmm. They've asked uh, all the scientists to come up to the, to the lobby. 
Uh, you should come too. Did they say why? Mm, no, just uh, yeah. well, there's some there's some clone troopers here. Clone troopers, huh? All right, and I guess he throws the sheet back over his his work, and he's gonna follow Manny up uh, up to the lobby. Uh, you go up to the lobby um, through the various levels of security, uh, scanning your credentials at each one to open the doors and. You get out there, and there are uh, a number of scientists, quite a few of them gathered around. And in front of the large glass windows of this place, between you and the, and the exit, are a line of clone troopers standing with their gleaming white armor with some red markings on uh, pauldrons and other places and helmets. And in front of them is somebody wearing... A gray suit with black armor over it. They've got a sort of a wide helmet on, and the visor on it is lowered, obscuring their face. And they are sort of pacing, looking around the crowd. It seems like they're looking for someone or something. Okay, I'm. I know what I'm gonna do. Park's not sure if they're looking for him or what they're even looking for but park has the innate ability to make himself seem more uh nonchalant he can he can fly casually i'm gonna use my talent indistinguishable are you sure you're not gonna use your talent shroud well that's the thing indistinguishable is passive so that'll just happen shroud is something you can choose to use i see okay i'm gonna use shroud I'm going to spend a destiny point to hide powers. That makes sense. If perhaps these, if perhaps a Jedi do they seek. So I'm going to spend my destiny. We've got two reds now. This person in black and gray speaks. Your cooperation is required. We seek out the remnants of corruption within the city. Corruption within the city? We have intel that says you may be harboring a rogue Jedi. Please, Jedi. form a line. Does Park, like, know he's got, like, it, it would be considered a Jedi? He probably really not know that he would be considered Jedi. He does. He is aware of his Force ability at this point, though. And is he, he... I think he might be aware that he... Is he aware he's on, like, a list? He's not on the list. Okay. All right, well, Park's gonna line up and do his best to hide his force ability which he would he would understand could make he could be who they're searching for and as as people line up this person they um lift their mask you see the the face of an elemen with red skin and an upturned nose and they almost like a bat's face they go from Mm. person to person they grab somebody's chin and look them up and down, move to the next person, look at them, and that's not the person. They move to the next one and call out. If you are harboring Jedi, knowingly, this could be a problem for you. If you know this person, come forward now. He moves on to the next person, two people away from Park. The next person is Manny. He just looks at Manny, shakes his head, and then moves on to Park. He squints his eyes at you. You are... Awfully young to be working at a place like this. I'm just an intern. This is actually my last week. Sort of tilts his head a little bit and inhales deeply. Mm. Yeah, sorry about that. I forgot to shower after gym today. Squints his eyes again and moves on to the next person. And he continues along the line from person to person. He finishes the last person. And he's kind of mad now. Because this was... This was a solid lead. There was Aurora Biotech property at that last location where they found the Mudhorn. And he pulls something from his back, this ring with a handle in the center of it. It looks like he thinks about it for a second as he slowly raises it and then puts it back down. A rogue Jedi used Aurora Biotech technology. If one of you is supplying or hiding this person i will find out and then he turns and leaves and the clones follow behind 
Yeah, I think Park slinks away. <laughs> so they know somebody, probably me, is using Aurora Biotech to make things like my reflect suit. Maybe maybe this shock this shock suit I'm making as well. Well you made the whipcord here. And the whipcord. Well, as long as I can keep things under wraps until the suit's done and approved, then I'll get it out of here. That'll be that. He's gonna go I guess he's gonna go like to the suit and maybe like maybe he's gonna take it with him so that if they come back and like root around they won't find any of the stuff that he's built how do you pack it up i think like you could put it in a backpack like the parts it's not as like bulky and heavy as like a clone suit mm -hmm. i think a lot of it is like soft material like spandexy sort of okay it doesn't just like turn into a briefcase <laughs> I, th I think that that would be maybe too ridiculous okay so yeah he packs it up He's going to pack okay. up all of his stuff. Um, maybe he leaves some uh, stuff so that it doesn't look like he's trying, has anything to hide. You pack up and you head home? Yeah, he's going to head home okay. to the to the, to the the Dunya household. And there's a screen away. So Park, I think, arrives at his home having traveled home via his, uh, what's, what's it called? His hover his foot speeder his foot speeder and he kicks his foot speeder uh up at the once he's reached home it is the usual chaos of the dunya household yep comes in there's i think he has a uh, 13 sure or maybe he's one of 13 sometimes he's not sure yeah walks by a, a big group watching uh watching the hollow screen he passes by a a, a group of siblings huddled around two or three little like battling spinning top droids uh-huh little little plastic things uh there's some smoke coming from the kitchen that is um and the sound of a of a extinguisher goes off it was hot pockets right hot pockets yeah <laughs> yep and what does he head up to his room yeah he's gonna head up to his room which is on the in the attic okay he gets into his room and closes the door and relishes the relative silence uh, after moving through the household of chaos. Mm -hmm. What is what is tonight looking like? He takes out the the new suit mm -hmm. and does some like calibration. And I think most, I, I guess, you don't always you're not going to always hear about uh, crime and well, stuff. So his his old suit has the built in like a comm scanner like mm -hmm. basically a mm -hmm. police uh radio scanner mm -hmm. so i feel like he would just be having that would just be on the on the desk flipping through yeah yeah he's most nights he while he's working on stuff in his room he's just got that on in case there's any situations that he needs to go out and deal with yeah i think uh, as he's he's working it's uh it is a fairly quiet night in the city um yeah, nothing super major going on. He can hear the the distant thunder as a storm is going to roll in overnight. And um, he continues working on his, his new suit. Does he want to tend to his injuries from earlier? Yeah, I was going to ask about that earlier. So yeah, he, he did suffer some wounds, and I think his his reflex body suit took, took some damage. Yeah. Um he'd have to repair that if he wanted it to be at uh at full power. Um but yeah. Yeah, he's got some bruised up ribs, some bruises on his like arms and legs. I think he he backed a body gel that he'll he rubs on some uh bruises and it mm -hmm. takes the takes the pain away, helps the healing pretty quickly. Yeah, and that can count as a, a stim pack, which will take your wounds back to normal if you want to do a mechanics check on your suit we can get with an average mechanics check to get your suit back in full working order okay does do i heal my strain also or does that stay we'll see how your mechanics check goes and then we'll do a, a cool check to get your strain back depending on how mechanics goes okay i'm gonna do mechanics what's my difficulty two purples do i get a boost because he's repaired this suit before 
You can have a, a boost because you are in your own workspace with your own tools. Any setbacks? No. I got three successes, I got one threat, and I got one triumph. Okay. Do you have an idea for your triumph? Your suit is at full capacity. Okay. Hmm. My triumph, I don't know. Does he finish uh, the, the other the first, suit? The first hit against it does not mm. reduce soak. Sure, I you like want it. To boost one of the other systems on it. Like you've got the uh, in suit scanners and all that sort of stuff. Um, um, I like the idea that the first hit is uh, is what did you say? It doesn't reduce the soak like it normally would. Oh, okay, yeah, I like that. It's pretty helpful. You got a threat. Mm-hmm. And I'll let you do your cool check to recover strain, no difficulty. And yeah, cool. Zero successes and three advantages. So as Park is putting the uh, final touches on his old suit, making sure it is up to full working order, an alert comes over the the clone uh, clone radio scanner that there is an armed robbery in progress, pretty close to where Park lives right now. Hmm. Well, good thing I got this suit ready in time. Sounds like somebody needs a little visit. Visit from me. Park suits up. Yeah, he's gonna suit up. Suits up and gets his whipcord thrower ready and heads out the window, of the attic of the Dunya household. Yep, and he's gonna uh, do as he always does: swing, uh, swing his way over to wherever this robbery is happening. And he swings uh, a few blocks away. It's about halfway up to Aurora Biotech, like a couple levels up and a couple streets over. And uh, when he gets on the scene, there are two people holding up a, a cashier in a small convenience store. One of them is going through the registers, putting all the, all the credits in a bag, and the other one holds a blaster. There are a few other people in the store sort of huddled in a corner. Park sees all this through a through the, the big panes of glass in the front of the store. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I'm going to sneak in. All right. Let's get a stealth. It's going to be against these goons. And these goons are... All right, it's going to be an average stealth check. Okay. I'll flip a, a dark side point to make it a red and a purple. Red, purple, stealth. Do I have anything that adds to stealth? You probably do. I probably do. Maybe I don't. Uh, uh, slight yeah, of mind. A, you have slight of mind. You get a boost on your stealth check. Okay. You took that once or twice? Slight of mind. I, looks like one. Okay. Zero successes and four advantages. Well, you're spotted. How does Park try to stealth in? Park drops down right in front of the this window and hunches down. And this is sort of... Is this like a convenience store? Yeah. He's, I think he has, I think he has <laughs> stopped uh, robbers at the same convenience store before. Yeah, uh-huh. It's convenient for shoppers and robbers. <laughs> Does he, he's like, all right, I'm going to take this one, going to take this one a little more delicately than last time. He whispers to himself. Uh, Does he open the door, like front door? Ding. And Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and the uh the two of them turn and look directly at you what do you want to do with four advantages <sighs> um can i jeez what can i do <laughs> uh <laughs> <sighs> so much for that approach i don't you know wanna, I'll... you want to put them on your um on your initiative yeah, I was thinking that. Okay, cool. Uh, you're rolling initiative. I think it's Vigilance for Park. Vigilance. The goons got a success and an advantage. Park and got I, a success I, and an mm -hmm. advantage. So, go first. My... Okay. Oh, you, did you not? You did not roll your four advantages. So, uh, oh, you get to have those. Oh, still. They can okay, be boosts. I got some... Okay. It's a lot of advantages. I think we'll buy uh, using something he doesn't use very much. Park has never used a a tool that he modified himself called the vibro rang. Great, finally. 
He's going to reach for his hip and chuck his vibro rang. Well, let's see if this thing really works. <laughs> and he... I'm going to take a boost for my advantages. How many boosts are you going to take for your advantages? I'll take two this time, and then I'll take two next time. Okay. Uh, you can take two this time and one next time, or you can take four this time. Oh, I'll take four this time then. Maybe I'll... Maybe maybe this will be an amazing vibro rank throw. <laughs> need eight disadvantages. Uh, no. You do need two advantages to to have it return to you. Oh wow! Okay. Wow! What that a roll! That is such a bad roll. <laughs> okay, I got tell, zero tell, me, tell me what dice you were rolling first. Three green, four blue, and one uh one purple. Um, so that's really bad luck. I got zero successes. And six advantages. Sometimes these rolls like are annoying because I'm like, what the heck am I supposed to do with six advantages? Well, it spins around the room and comes back to you for two advantages. Okay, and then, and then you still like have four. It has a critical of yeah, two. but you didn't hit, so you can't crit. Uh, can I? Oh, okay. Can I? This is ridiculous. And can I hit something that um turns the lights out? Wow just hits a light switch <laughs> and breaks it oh, i meant to do that <laughs> tell me what happens yeah you can do that it does it and you're gonna use the rest of the advantages to make it so you're gonna knock out the lights mm -hmm. have it come back to you mm -hmm. uh i think you still got two advantages wow well it sounds like i'm gonna need those for the next row you're gonna next attack. pass them as a as boosts for your next roll. yeah okay uh so what happens Park throws this vibrarang for the first time. <laughs> it goes uh, are behind the uh, past these guys behind them. They both follow it <laughs> as it goes. Okay, <laughs> it's a I'm gonna call that a user error. Uh, and as it does this, it uh, on its way back to him hits a, a control pad that turns on the interior and exterior lights and they all power down and i think it does come back to him but it's like he has to like pick it up off the ground hey who turned out the lights that's why they call me the night cat and uh he's gonna he's gonna try and make himself stealthy again you inadvertently succeeded at being stealthy inadvertently stealthy so park comes in trying to be stealthy he's like crouched in the door opens it as quietly as he can and there's a ding ding mm -hmm. both the thieves spin towards park with their blasters drawn and park chucks this vibro rang which spins around the room and they follow it and as it comes back it bounces off the lights uh the light panel and lands back in front of park the lights go out but the two thieves had followed it all the way back pretty much to where park is and are going to try and fire on him mm -hmm. and you're going to take some uh and we, setbacks they took two setbacks for darkness they still got a success and two advantages so they are going to deal seven damage to park okay the red lights of blaster bolts light up the interior of this uh this little convenience store as they fire willy-nilly at the at the front door the the window uh, behind park gets hit blown out and glass goes scattering out into the street park's turn okay he's going to pick up that viper ring yeah and in the darkness try and use it in its other uh function which okay. is a, as a as a as a melee weapon so the one thief who is behind the counter ducks behind the counter and uh, Park sees this all clear as day with the sensors that are built into his suit. The person who owns the store as well, a chatter fan named Mr. Sledge Michian, ducks behind the counter and you hear uh, screams as the those blaster bolts break the window and uh, from the um, from the few people who are huddled in the corner the one person ducks behind the counter and the other one uh, moves towards those people and park is going to try and vibro rang them mm-hmm okay 
I'm gonna take two boosts from my past advantages. Yes. This stinks. That was also like, I, like just super unlucky. I yeah, rolled just very, rolled, very unlucky. I rolled two yellows, a green, two blues against two purple die, and I got zero successes and three advantages. All right. What do you want to do with those three advantages? I didn't hit anything. Do you want to prevent the one moving towards the people from taking a hostage? Yeah, he's gonna. You can sort of see him, sort of like holding onto the shelves to try and get over there without falling over in the dark. Mm -hmm. Park gets, puts himself between um, this, uh, this goon and these hostages. The blaster bolts broke the, these kind of pain, big paned windows in front of the place. And Park is going to say to these potential hostages, everybody out that window or the front door right now, I'll take care of this guy. And there's some shouts and screams, and uh, the people get up, and let's see what happens. This could go really badly. I hope it does. Kind of the uh, the two thieves with their with their blasters. They they feel like they even though the lights are out, they've got control of the situation. You're not hitting them at all, and they start shooting at you. The one is almost engaged with you. He's very very close. The one, the other one behind the counter is sort of like, he's got his blaster up over the counter and he's just sort of peeking. And as the two of them shoot into this space, they not only hit you, but the one behind the counter hits the other, uh, the other thief. Mm. That will be six damage. Okay. Well, that was bad luck for them. Yeah. The, the shot hits the other, the other goon and, uh, you hear him grunt, uh, and you can see the, you can hear the sizzle of the, uh, of the blaster bolt after it hits him. All right. You gonna do something better? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I was almost gonna do something worse just to see what would happen. I, I don't know if I've ever like done a done this force punch thing that I seem to have. So you get to add your force die to brawl checks. I want to try and do this and just see what will happen. I like the idea of trying something different every single time in combat even though that might slow combat down but so it's not just uh not just punches but if you want to do a force kick do a force okay. headbutt um let's see i'm gonna do a force punch and it's gonna use his little shield gauntlet okay so his little shield gump he clicks a button this guy got shot in front of him Vroom. yeah and he's gonna he's gonna sock it to him so i think that Let's see. This is like the shock gloves where it does one damage, but it will. I think the damage adds brawn. I think it does. It should. Okay. And what does the force die do to this roll? Uh, if you roll a light side or dark side, it is a success or an advantage. Mm, okay. All right. Let's see. Let's go over here. I'm going to click shield gauntlet. Goons engaged. Build a pool. Then we're gonna add a force die. You wanna use your light side point? Yeah, let's use the light side point. We gotta do everything we can here. So my green's gonna become a yellow. All right, finally, I got three successes, one threat, and two light side. Okay, do um, you wanna use those light side as advantages or successes, or one of each? Will successes do more damage? Successes will add to your damage. I wanna do that then. And you're gonna keep the threat? Yeah. Okay, so that will be six damage uh, minus their soak, and yeah, you're gonna knock one of them out. What happens? He turns on that vibro shield. The little boom comes across to the uh, the back of his hand, and before this goon has a chance to do anything about it, he's gonna take a hard punch right to his the core of his torso and it's gonna shoot this goon back towards a wall of snacks that smash and clutter all over him um and i there's think a, that, there's a phew, as one of the bags explodes like night crisper dust goes everywhere mm -hmm. yeah and this goon lays limp on the floor the people take the opportunity that you just gave them and run out the front door and 
the second thief, seeing that you knocked out the first one, uh, is also going to uh, make a run for it. Uh, running out the door, and I will spend the my two advantages and one threat and a dark side point as the the thief the thief runs out the door with uh, with his blaster, and a hundred feet up, silhouetted against the skyline of Coruscant, we see a figure in a black cloak, which is billowing in the wind. Behind them, the lightning from that distant storm crashes. You can see the flashes and the boom of thunder. And looking down over Little Onderon and Dak Avenue, they see the blaster shots and feel somebody using the force. They drop down from the top of the building that they were perched on, down and down into the skylines, passing speeders, passing ships as they fly up into the atmosphere, and they land in front of this convenience store. They take the closest person that they can find, somebody running and screaming from this place, and grab them and hold them and ignite the red lightsaber in front of them. Jedi, come out. It is time. Thank you for listening to this episode of Coruscant Nights. Park was played by Doug. For more from Doug, visit voidboy.art. Thank you to AJ for donating for Destiny for this episode. If you like Coruscant Nights and want to support all of Nightcast Creative's shows, please visit us at patreon.com slash Coruscant Nights. Coruscant Nights is produced by Nightcast Creative. For more about us and the things that we do, visit nightcastcreative.com.